Alrighty, so it is once again time to strap in for another one-shot review. Today, the movie that I watched is Chain Reaction with Keanu Reeves and Morgan Freeman. Um, I have this movie on DVD. I got this from my grandpa um, when he was ready to get rid of a lot of his DVDs. And today I found the time to watch it in between meetings um, while I was working on some stuff. And I have a lot to say about this movie, I think. Um, just because of what this type of movie is in reference or context to sort of the kind of movies that we get today um, versus what we used to get a lot of in the 90s. Um, so let's start off. So what is this movie about? Honestly, I think one of the easiest ways to uh, describe this would be to sort of summarize what I'm seeing here on the back of the, the DVD case. And essentially a student machinist, Keanu Reeves, is helping create this um, limitless, they fit, how do I say this right away? Basically, they're creating a hydrogen power plant sort of science situation. And this is this movie's idea of what we would think about maybe a movie about fusion energy would be today. You know, the idea that you could, through science, create the generation of efficient, lossless energy, making clean, free energy for the entire world. Okay, so at the beginning of this movie, he's working with a team of scientists, including one of the other characters in the film, um, Rachel Weisz who plays, uh, I don't remember, I think, honestly, I don't remember what her name is in the film. That's my bad, but um, essentially, they're all working on this. And this machinist is, is also going to school um, at the University of Chicago to, you know, major in all these sort of physicist sort of things that these people are working on as well. So it's not the fact that he just knows how to put the stuff together, but Keanu Reeves also understands the underlying science behind the way things are working at this facility. Um, so that, this all builds to, in the very beginning of the movie, they are able to achieve this stable energy that they were trying to get. Um, and then that night after they all celebrate and go home, a bunch of unknown mercenaries break in, kill the main professor and the other guy that have no idea where he went. Okay. So then Keanu Reeves and this girl show up at the authorities the next day. By the way, the same team like completely blows up this facility in the middle of Chicago, um, causing like a huge nationwide panic sort of thing. So naturally the FBI gets involved. Um, and so in the beginning, they're sort of talking to Keanu Reeves' character and he was at the wrong place at the wrong time because he went back and saw the murdered professor um, cause he actually went back to pick up his motorcycle. It's just like a part of the story. Um, he tries to administer CPR to the professor that has been uh, suicided and he can't find the other doctor. The place is about to blow up. He runs away, blows up, right? So then the next day he's telling them about all the details, like being a good citizen, stuff like that. But naturally he is the first suspect that anybody would think of because why was he there? He apparently has some history of blowing up a lab at his old college. Um, so then they're like, naturally it's this guy, um, but obviously we know it's not. And so this all builds to Morgan Freeman's character was say like a liaison that was providing money from his foundation for the funding of this research, right? And the night before all this, or the night of the discovery that all this works, um, before any of the crazy stuff happens, Morgan Freeman and the main professor who was suicided are talking about, um, you know, like you can't just release this information to the public. You know, you can't, um, you know, the implications of doing something like this, who knows what if China gets a hold of it, which is kind of funny, like thinking about a movie even back then had like China panic, but, um, Regardless, things are already looking fishy from that point of view. Um, but this Morgan Freeman character is the head of this foundation. And he also has ties to some stuff we don't really understand yet at that point in the movie. But he is willing to help out Keanu Reeves' character and Rachel Weisz's character 
to get them essentially somewhere safe. Um, then it opens up into this whole sort of action thriller of the wrong, you know, some of these reviews are calling it the wrongly accused genre. And essentially the rest of the movie is Keanu Reeves and this girl um, running away from the FBI and what we find out to be the CIA um, because they know too much, plus they're supposed to be the scapegoat. So if they get out and talk too much about what they're discovering, then that sort of ruins the entire cover up of this technology. And so as the film goes on, we start to realize that Morgan Freeman, well, by the way, spoilers right here. If you are going to want to watch this movie spoiler free, like stop right now because I'm about to go into it, um, but for good reason. So um, stop right now, this is your warning. The movie's been out for forever. The thing is came out in 96. Um, if you're gonna be mad about spoilers, that's your fault. Um, that being said, Morgan Freeman's character is connected to the CIA. And in fact, we find out that his previous positions before he was in charge of this foundation is that he was doing government experiments with very high level tech shit and um, classified stuff like DARPA is name dropped in the movie and stuff like that. So now we understand sort of the love triangle of, of uh, trying to catch this Keanu Reeves character is that the CIA was actually behind the cover up because they're the ones developing this technology and they would like to develop it in secret. And the fact that the this sort of normal research group was able to find the answer was unexpected, despite the fact that they had an inside man looking over them. And so they're trying to cover all this up. And their ultimate goal was to kill the one professor that um, was talking too much about it and then bring everybody else in to finish the science in-house um, and let it all go. And they were gonna kill Keanu Reeves' character as a scapegoat and sort of Lee Harvey Oswald this to end the discussion. If you believe in something like that, obviously I don't have any speculation about JFK. I'm just saying this is the sort of conspiracy that it would be um, if that one's true. But all of this to say that the, the it's very interesting because this movie builds a sort of um, dynamic that I don't know if we've thought about our US institutions this way in a while, but I think it's kind of based. And that is that the FBI is not up to any secret no good doing. And they are just people who maybe wanted to be law enforcement and became the FBI as a, as a measure of how good they were at their job or they were in the FBI from the beginning, but they're not like up to any secrets. And they're really trying to get to the bottom of what happened. And they just happen to think because of all the breadcrumbs that the CIA has left that Keanu Reeves is a bad guy. Keanu Reeves just wants to not get murdered or suicided and wants to release this data to the world so that everybody can have the clean free energy that him and the professor were fighting for. And then the CIA, like we said before, their motivation is to create a scapegoat, cover it up, call it a day and finish it in secret. And it's interesting because the, the, the dynamic plays into this thing where the CIA are the no good um, people getting into business they shouldn't be in and creating all these government conspiracies and the FBI is trying to do an honest investigation and that ends up putting the FBI at odds with the CIA because they are you know, truly an arm of justice and one for the people and not something that is tainted like the CIA or national security. And I think that um, if that was real life, that would be kind of cool. I have no idea what the situation is behind closed doors in real life, but um, the FBI actually working on behalf of the citizens in this movie was kind of based and I liked that aspect. Um, so that, that's the whole setup, but the way this movie plays out is it is your typical sort of like wrongly accused, born sort of action film. Um, apparently it's by the same guy that made, um, I've got it somewhere over here, by the same guy that made this movie, even though I haven't watched it yet, The Fugitive, which apparently was a banger in the theaters because all the reviews for this 
movie that I looked at after watching the film are talking about how they were trying to recreate the magic of this movie. Um, you know, it goes through the normal paces. I think all the action sequences are interesting. There's this one scene where he's on the, you know, like a raised bridge in Chicago and he sort of figures out a way to give the FBI the slip. And uh, it's sort of clever the way he does it. It reminds me of like video game stealthing where you could be right next to the enemy and they have no idea, but it sort of makes sense that you could slip by them if you're being quiet enough. Um, that was a cool scene. Uh, Keanu Reeves' character is a machinist and they play into that a little bit throughout the movie with him being able to sort of like steal this Dodge Ram Charger out of an old garage because he just fixes it up overnight and they get going. Um, as well as um, he's very capable throughout the movie as as you would think somebody that's going to use Chicago and is actually good with tools and things like that would be and that sort of plays into this slight very slight MacGyver effect that you get from him where he's able to get out of all these short um, situations and run-ins that he has with the CIA and the cops um, but all of this boils to a head at the end of the movie, where essentially um, the dad from the grandpa, or, you know, whatever you would call him from Succession, Brian Cox, is the main bad guy CIA agent in this movie. And he wants to, he's the main one that wants to kill Keanu, cover it up, and call it a day. And what you realize is that him and Morgan Freeman are working together. They're part of the same team, but Morgan Freeman is maybe more of an ideologue where. Um, he is in favor of hiding all this information. He doesn't want to kill people for no reason. And he would rather bring these scientists into almost like a witness protection situation where they're secretly working on it with him and nobody knows. But the way they're doing this is everybody's held against their will. So it's not necessarily like the most amicable situation, nor is it like morally just. But... Um, you just find out like Morgan Freeman's not a good guy, but he's also not the worst guy because he doesn't want them to die. Um, and as the movie goes on, they have this interesting scene at the end where Keanu Reeves and Morgan Freeman have like an ideology sort of speak at the end of the movie to, to figure out who who's right and who's wrong. You know, that final point where they they connect right before the climax of the film where everything's going crazy. And... It's interesting because there's an, a good conversation about the concept of creative destruction, even if they don't call it that in the film, where Morgan Freeman is talking about, you know, yes, all this advancement in technology would be amazing if we could share it with the rest of the world, but the world is going to be moving too fast if that happens and people won't know what to do. The stock markets will plunge overnight and people's retirement plans will be absolutely borked and it'll be horrible, the entire financial system will collapse, we cannot do that. Whereas Keanu Reeves is like, uh, we just created free, free clean energy that will revolutionize the way that the world works in a very positive way. Um, what's the problem with that, right? And I think it's interesting because they, we basically still have this discussion a lot today, even with stuff, technology that we know about being like, um, Renewable energy, as in solar, and I guess if you consider nuclear to be clean, then nuclear as well, are both reaching the point where the efficiency of those energy sources are actually worthwhile in implementing and would offset the need for all this oil and coal production. But yet the, and honestly, I understand the, the plight, but you have all these communities that live off the back of coal production that if coal goes away, you know, what is there to replace them? And they're not going to um, be able to learn skills fast enough to replace some other part of the marketplace. So it's just interesting because we still have this discussion today and the movie kind of called it out um, right on its head. But this movie ends sort of the way you would expect any of these movies to end. And it's kind of based because the FBI finds out that Keanu's being framed. And so they end up just working on behalf of the president to figure out what the CIA is up to, or at least they're sort of on our side at the end of the movie. Um, and everybody, there's sort of this happily ever after 
where Morgan Freeman kills his partner and then the CIA says that the program's finished and that's just what it is and fine. I mean, the ending was what it was. I, I guess it was what it was supposed to be. Um, I wouldn't have really done it any other way if it were me. So that makes a lot of sense to me. I don't think it was anything profound, but that's the movie, you know? And I think uh, having looked at the reviews after this out of curiosity because I was sitting here like, I wonder what they thought about it back in 96 or 2000 um, about a movie like this because movies like this were coming out a lot back then. And I feel like sort of summer action flicks like this one um, are maybe out of style and they're not coming out in the same way. Like now the marvelization of everything has made every action summer flick some sort of, um, you know, it, it's either comic book or it's taken, you know, it's nothing in between. Um, but that's just my critique, I guess. But what was interesting was that the reviews from when this movie first came out were saying that the movie was freaking dog water. That like the Rotten Tomato score for this was like 12%. Um, and I don't know if that's because, you know, looking at Rotten Tomatoes for older movies is kind of pointless. But a lot of people gave this movie um, in the papers like a two and a half out of four or a two out of four. And some people even gave it like a zero, like, ooh, this movie is completely garbage. And I think that's just wrong. Uh, this movie, in many ways, is better than a lot of movies that are coming out today. And it is not a bad movie. They don't do anything in this movie that doesn't make sense, other than maybe the, the contraption that they're using to make energy doesn't make sense to me. But maybe if you understood um, their way to create like a hydrogen cell, it does make sense. I mean, I don't know. But... I just feel like I shouldn't care about that. It's just a goofy movie from the 90s. But but th there was nothing bad about this movie. I felt like it was a fun time. If it was 1996 and I was able to see this in theaters and I paid, you know, like whatever, you know, like eight bucks to go see it, I wouldn't be upset. It was It would have been a good time. So I think that that maybe teaches me a lesson that if you're going to look at the Rotten Tomatoes or any other review score for an older movie, um, maybe don't. But I guess I'm just very confused. So I, I put the call to action out with this. You know, if you have the ability to watch this movie, whether it be on streaming, which the Internet's telling me it's on HBO Max um, or through the DVD, please let me know if you thought this movie was bad like genuinely dog water don't see it bad because i didn't think it was that bad and some of the reviews were literally saying you know like one of keanu reeves worst performances and morgan freeman um couldn't save this movie or something like that and uh i just honestly don't get why people were so harsh i mean maybe maybe this movie is is god tier and therefore, in comparison to this one, it's poopy. But I just, I don't agree. So if I'm plugging this into my score system, obviously we cannot see this movie in theaters anymore unless you catch one of these random art house showings. Um, I would say watch it. No reason to skip this movie. If you see it on streaming or you've seen it on DVD for the cheap um, at, a, at, you know, like uh, an exchange or something like that get it watch it it was a great uh hour and 45 minutes of time i think if you want to have one of those old school movie nights with um with your significant other and get some popcorn going it's a summer action thriller it it delivers on that promise and i don't think it, it offends me in any way so i would give this a definitely watch it um at home and i would give it a three out of five a just a three, you know, like a good movie, but nothing special. So um, other than, you know, I will say, though, that that the whole dynamic where the FBI and the CIA are working at odds with each other, um, that was kind of interesting. I wish that maybe there were more movies that had that sort of bend to them. But all in all, um, that's the score. Three out of five. Um, good. And watch it at home. So that's it. That's the review.